Good afternoon to a very tired audience, which has been here since some of uh, them have been here since 8 o'clock. And uh, it has been a long day indeed. So I will not take much time because I have been looking at, uh, I know that they are looking at the watch, the clock, and then they are also coming to remind speakers that time is up. So I shall take, um, I hope I will be able to close my, uh, make my statements in the time that is allocated to me. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, Zilur Rahman and the CGS for inviting me to share my thoughts on this very uh, August moment of uh, celebration of the 50 years of independence of Bangladesh and also the 101 year birth, birth, uh, birth day of the um, uh, father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. I remember those days very distinctively because I was a college student at the time in 1971. And of course, um, the student community at the time was very vibrant, played a very significant role hand in hand with the political parties in um, creating the atmosphere to be able to fight the war that came along and uh, the war that we lived through for nine months. Those nine months were more than nine months actually. To us, it felt like more than nine years. And some of us during that time thought and looked at Biafra, if you I mean, uh, some people will remember Biafra and how they tried to get their independence at the time struggling, never made it. So we were not sure that we will come through to this day when Bangladesh's progress, um, a tremendous progress in all sectors is being deeply appreciated not only by the Bangladeshi community, Bangladeshis in the country and um, other, others living abroad, but also by the international community. Recognizing that the bottomless basket has converted in itself into a basket full of opportunities. We have, since the last um, census done in some time in 2009 or 10, I believe, we have been talking about the tremendous demogra uh, demographic dividend that Bangladesh has. And this morning, we heard some speakers talk about the Bangladesh um, the, the demographic dividend and how to take benefit from that dividend while the time lasts. Because this morning we were also reminded that this population will be aging very soon, very quickly. And then we will be finding ourselves in a, a, a fresh set of problems, which I hope we don't have to face if we are prepared and uh, ready to take on the challenges that come with the, this demographic dividend of young people in this country, as well as with, with so much opportunity that is available that we need to take um, action on if we really want to progress in, uh, in terms of the next 50 years. We have come a long way in 50 years, but the next 50 years I, in my view, is critical for us to come to a position where we can talk about sustainable development. We have been talking about sustainable development for the last couple of years, particularly since the um, SDGs were adopted in the United Nations. And one of the major goals of the SDGs is not to leave anyone behind. And that should be the guiding principle for this country for the next, at least until the SDGs have been recognized and realized properly in this country. We have had leaders who have helped us make this tremendous progress. And we have had, as we heard this morning, leaders who have not, not done so well 
and have helped this country um, sort of uh, in a limbo for a long time. We were under military rule and we have gone through those uh, situations. So we recognize that uh, we have to be, we have to remain vigilant for the next 50 years. We cannot be complacent uh, about what we have achieved and say that, well, we are no longer the, uh, the poverty ridden um, country that we were. We have made tremendous progress and we should be happy with this. Um, at 50, 50 years of Bangladesh, we should also think about the 50% of the population that we have, which is the female population. Progress has been made, but not as much by the women of this country. There has been a lot of um, developments in the development sector and as well in the government for the women. There is a women's development policy that has been adopted by, um, this by the last government, and those uh, issues are out there to be implemented. Those decisions are out there to be implemented which have not been done as yet. So I would like to invite the political parties. I see that the political parties are well represented in this room, or at least they were in the morning. Most of them were here. Um, that they must recognize that the country cannot make whatever progress it has made cannot sustain it or cannot make further progress without the full uh, and um, full engagement of the half of the population we have heard just now about the um, about inclusiveness and I think it's a very important factor that we change, we, we are able to change our mindsets, to be able to think about how to include the marginalized, how to include the population that has been left behind, not because they have a lack of education or lack of opportunities, but just because there is a mindset not to not to allow them to progress. That is the most important thing that I think, in my view, um, that we must focus on at this from now on. I, um, as you heard, I served in the Foreign Service for a very long time, almost three decades, and uh, um, made a lonely journey for a while, but then more women came in. Today we have eight female ambassadors in different countries, and I'm very proud of them, and I'm sure Bangladesh is very proud of them. But uh, to bring women at par with men in economic, political, and social development, the principle of equality is very, very important. What we don't have now is, the, uh, is equal opportunity for women. And one of the primary things that I felt while working, after my retirement, I started an organization called Bangladesh Alliance for Women Leadership. Basically, what we have been trying to do is develop the skills, soft skills of the women in terms of becoming leaders in their society in the country, and also to demand that they have a role to play. Our female political leaders have shown us the path, but we need to take that forward. And we need to take that forward with their engagement, the engagement of the women. And so societal values have to, uh, must be strengthened to make it more inclusive and um, in a very positive manner, not in the negative sense that we are seeing in recent days in terms of, um, in terms of the problems that women face when they are work, going to work and coming back from work late at night and those other issues. Uh, security issues, we have heard about the security of Bangladesh, but the most important thing in life is the feeling of human security. If I don't feel secure about my life when I step out of this place, then I actually have no place in this society in, in this. So what I basically want to say is that it's important to remember as we go, as we progress further, and as our development partners 
um, uh, share their views and their thoughts on how we should progress. We should actually look into these things. That the inclusiveness is not only about marginalized people from uh, different communities, but about the heart of the population, whether they come from the tribal areas, from different religions, from different ethnic groups, whatever. That half of the population has to be taken care of and looked into. And therefore, we must, from now on, strive to get 50% women into the parliament. Um, we should increase the number of reserve seats in the parliament for now. And we should actually ask the political parties to take the decision now that they will actually allow women in leadership positions in their community, in their, in their development uh, sectors, and within the political parties. Without that, we cannot actually make any progress. And we cannot be complacent about what we have achieved and what we are going to achieve in the future. Thank you very much.